Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Happiest Hour on Earth. My name is Chris. My name is Emily. And we are so excited that you are joining us today. It is finally the weekend, so sit back, relax, grab some food, grab some drink, whatever you want to do, and let's talk all things Disney. Um, so since this is our first ever episode, we decided, you know what, we should let people know why we started this podcast in the first place. And when the pandemic hit, we missed out on two um, two things that we love doing all the time. Number one was, I was going to say Disney, but I feel like we have to, our friends will get mad if we don't say, hanging out with friends <laughs> over food and drink and just talking, chatting, just catching up on life. Um, and number two was all things Disney. And so we decided, you know what, what is one way we could merge those two as everything is closed and bring that into our space and also to wherever you guys might be listening. Um, you can find us Spotify, hopefully Apple Podcasts and YouTube. So um, we wanted to bring that experience to anyone who is also missing Disney and hanging out with friends. Yes. Yeah. So we don't label ourselves as a Disney food podcast per se, but we thought it would still be fun to incorporate Disney food into our weekly podcasts so that we get a little bit, a little taste of Disney as we yeah. go about our podcast. And so each week, and we realized as we were prepping for this first episode that it's going to be a challenge, but you know what? <laughs> we're going to every single week, we're going to be making one Disney food item and one Disney drink item each week. So Find us on Instagram and tell us what your favorite food and drink item is, and we'll try to make it. So um, with that, before we announce what we're eating right here, actually, if you're watching us on YouTube, you probably have an idea right now. But before we uh, talk about that, let's get the show rolling. All right, so Emily, it is time. If you're watching on YouTube, you know what we're eating right now. Emily... Can you describe to our audio listeners what we have in front of us? Yes. So, obviously, here we have some Mickey pretzels. Oh, yeah. Um, these are my favorite snack in the park. There's just a lot of nostalgia tied to them for me. Um, so, I felt like that had to be the first snack that we brought in. Um, and then we've got some mint juleps here. Yes. So, Chris helped out with those. I made the pretzels. Um, we have not tried them yet. We don't know what we're getting ourselves into yet, but, yeah. uh, oh we're looking forward to trying them right here in front of you. <laughs> we had a nice little struggle for our first episode. I hope, I, I'm sure yours came out okay. Um, we'll see. So our pretzel, um, we were looking at different recipes. We actually ended up on one recipe that D23 put out, which actually called for already pre-made dough. So we decided, dough. yeah, pre-made pizza dough, and um, we have a seven-month-old baby, and so we're like, maybe let's, let's go the easy forego, route this time. <laughs> yeah, let's forego the yeast and all that stuff, and let's just do pre-made dough. Although we could have literally just bought frozen pretzels and made them, so I feel like we were right in that middle, somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle. So we Still did have to some put effort. some work. Yeah, oh for sure, <laughs> it was harder then, than I thought it would be. For the mint juleps, um, we actually had to make our own simple syrup. So. Um, Water, sugar, mint leaves, crushed up, um, and then it's lemonade, limeade, um, and then and that's and, and some <laughs> ice, and that's pretty much it. So we did make the Disney classic uh, mint julep, um, but then since the mint julep is already a cocktail, we decided once we have a few sips, we are going to dump some uh, some whiskey in there. And so I, I decided to go way. with the uh, with the tiki shot glasses because one of our favorite yeah, places is. is Trader Sam's. So um, we will be making some Trader Sam's drinks hopefully soon because we already make them anyway, but we're going to make them for the show pretty soon. So yeah. that'll be great. Um, are we Let's digging in? Let's try these things. <laughs> Let's go in. And I forgot the cheese. Oh, yeah. It's just store-bought store cheese because I believe Disney just uses store-bought cheese. Store it literally cheese, right? tastes exactly the same. That is one thing I tried before. I'm pretty sure that's what it's the same. Is. I like know, yeah. Or something. Well, it is in like a little thing that you just open. Yeah. And it's not Disney labeled, so I'm sure it's store bought. So yeah. okay, let's let's dig in. All First right, off, let's, let's show our uh, show the creation here. Here's yeah, some okay. for you. I'm going ear yeah. first. Yeah, I feel I like I always go ear first. Sorry, Mickey. You dip. All right. 
Wives first. Here we go. <laughs> Not bad. That's actually bad. really, really good. It doesn't, like, when we were making them, we realized that it doesn't really look like the Mickey pretzels you get in the park, or a pretzel in general. Almost tastes like a bagel pretzel, mm -hmm. but it's really good. Yeah, it's not, it's actually not too bad. with my mouthful. Not to mention, anything tastes better in a Mickey shape. Mm. So, they're pretty good. It really does. Actually, better than I thought. Mm-hmm. And they're cooked through, which I was worried about. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would have been, we were talking, we we're like, what if we had a bite and it just was like a straight dough? dough. Oh, that would have been bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, we mm -hmm. doing a uh, mint juleps. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, yeah. Oh, really good. That's good. Really good, yeah. I have yeah. to say, like, mint juleps aren't my favorite drink in the world, but I also haven't had them in a very long time in Disneyland. Yeah. And they're pretty dang good. Like, that's pretty that refreshing. That is really refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These paper straws are always a pain. Yeah. But once you get past that, that's actually really, really good. That's, a, that's pretty Sweet. tasty. Good job. Yeah. So as we enjoy, or as I enjoy, since you'll be talking... You want to just tell everyone just a little bit about ourselves and, you know, our Disney journey and yeah, why we loved it. Definitely. So, um, I became a fan of Disney when I was about 14 years old. Um, I went on a trip with my best friend and her family um, and just completely fell in love with it. Uh, we went for a couple of days and I feel like it just changed my life. <laughs> um Never looked back. Um, I've loved it ever since. And um, I met Chris uh, two years later when I was 16. And when we uh, started talking and kind of getting to know each other, we very quickly realized that Disney was something we definitely had in common. He had gone uh, for his whole life on trips with his family, and he also loved it as much, if not more, than I did. So... That's been a huge bond for us ever since. Um, we got engaged there in 2015? 15, yeah. 2015. We got married in 2016. Um, uh, so it's just been a huge staple in our lives ever since. And we, we just love it. We can't wait to bring our baby boy there yeah. as soon as we can after things are reopened and uh, things are back to normal hopefully yeah, we always had this dream of taking him on his one-year-old birthday so Which maybe we'll August. try to swing it yeah august so hopefully we'll try to swing we'll it see. also um yeah we started going i think two months into our dating relationship so mm -hmm. literally and ever every year since every since year since yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so amazing yep. um all right so we decided as we enjoy oh actually now it's your time to eat while well, I give a little right. talk. But um, I'll enjoy. We decided that as we're just enjoying, I wanted to just give a little breakdown of what's been happening in Disney news. Um, not too much since, a, you know, Disneyland is closed. Disney World is open, thankfully. Um, but the CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, did announce that um, Disneyland is hoping to reopen end of April, if you haven't heard, at 15% capacity. Um, I believe it's for California residents only. So if you're a California resident, then you're in luck. If you could make a reservation, I feel like does. it's definitely going to be very tough to get a reservation. But if you can, then you're able to go end of April. Um, finally. It, yeah, finally. Oh, my gosh. It's been over a year. Crazy. Miss it. So great. We actually went, I think... The three, month. two weeks or something like that before it actually closed. So we were able to go on, you know, Rise of the Resistance, uh, go to Galaxy's Edge for the first time. All that stuff, amazing. So once it opens, you guys are in for a treat um, if you guys haven't already been. Um, but in Disney Plus news, Ryan the Last Dragon came out. We just watched it a couple days ago. So good. Balled our eyes out. So amazing. Love that Very movie so much. Felt. Oh, so heartfelt. Um, and then also we have, if you're sad that WandaVision has ended, we have Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming out, I think by the time this 
episode is posted. So mm-hmm. we have another good 10 weeks. I love that they do it weekly. Mm-hmm. I feel like every service is doing it all at once, but it's so fun watching it weekly. So yeah. um, we have about, ten, I think, 10 weeks of Falcon and the Winter Soldier to just um, go through together. That's going to be so exciting. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it, except I did hear that Peter Pan and Wendy, which is going to be the live action version of Peter Pan, actually started production, I think today, which we're recording this on a Tuesday. So I think it started either today or yesterday. And the cast is just growing for that. So that's super exciting. Um, so great. I love Peter Pan. I know. I'm so excited okay. to see what they what they do in the movie. And I did hear that Alan Tudyk just got signed, I think, today. And as we discussed recently, he's just voices. So maybe he's the crocodile. Maybe he's, I don't know what he's going to be, but he's in it and it's great. We love you, Alan Tudyk. So exciting. Um, So I've done a lot of talking. Em, do you want to explain kind of what our main topic is tonight? Sure. So um, we felt as though for our first episode that we couldn't start any other way than to just kind of outline for you guys what our typical day in Disneyland looks like. Uh, basically how we start our day and end our day. And uh, in the midst of that, kind of a favorite food and and or drink in each land. And also kind of a favorite or a special um, thing to do in each land. We, we decided to exclude rides Would from that been- list. Too boring. Um, too boring. It would just be too easy because obviously the rides are the main attractions in each, each land, like, you know, Pirates and New Orleans Square, Indy and Indeed. Adventureland. Yeah. Main attractions. So we decided to challenge ourselves a little bit and figure out another special thing to each of us in each of the lands. So yeah. let's get rolling here. Let's go. I right. have another bite of pretzel. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Finish that quick because I'm going to ask you, as we start our day, crack of dawn, we love to get there at opening if we can, Um, start out on Main Street, obviously. We enter those gates and start walking down Main Street. What is your favorite snack or drink on Main Street? Snack or drink. Um, So... I would have to say, so one thing coming from us, we haven't been to a ton of restaurants on Main, on Main Street. Street. Yeah, because I feel like we love it so much. We, I mean, literally Main Street is the best way to start a Disney experience. I mean, as you're walking down that street, you're All seeing what Walt pretty much grew up in. He He designed Main Street to be like... Um, where he grew up. Yeah, where he grew up when he was a kid. So literally that just puts you into the spirit. But I feel like a lot of times we enjoy all that, but we don't want to sit down and have a long uh, meal there because we're like, Ready let's go. Let's, <laughs> let's grab some fast passes. Let's get going. Um, so we don't really eat there a lot. Um, I had one thing and then I realized that I think I chose something different. Do you have it on your phone? Um, I think so. I let's see. I had something in mind, but then I forgot the main. We wrote some notes, so uh, we did. We so, want to be prepared for a first one, or did I literally did. say what? Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't even. I didn't even change it. So we have been to the Plaza Inn. We've had some great food there, but nothing really stood out to me. So literally, I feel bad. So bad saying this, but. Um, one of the things we always get every time we go to the parks is Starbucks. And this is a terrible way to start the show because there's so much better Disney coffee in the parks and uh, way better food on Main Street. And we are going to be making some of the food on Main Street, right like there. Monte Cristo and all that stuff. But I did choose Starbucks. I know. Please forgive me. Keep listening to the episode. It gets better. I'm sorry for my <laughs> Starbucks mention. And um, what is your favorite food or drink? <sighs> Well, yeah, as Chris said, we don't we don't spend a lot of time eating on Main Street. But when we do, Gibson Girl. Gibson ice Girl. Cream. Oh my gosh. Favorite. So good. Uh I love the ice cream there and it is just it's just 
It's my favorite way to end my Disney day. Um, I love going there at night and just kind of hanging out on Main Street. So that's that's my that's my favorite on Main Street. Definitely. Yeah. So so great. Um, are we doing an experience? Experience, yeah. All right, What's experience. Your favorite? So my favorite experience on Main Street, there's so many to choose from. Yeah. Um, but I think one of my favorite things is seeing all the characters that are lined up around the flagpole. And just once you go under the railroad track and you see all those characters, there's always so many characters there. It's the best way to start your Disney day. And a lot of times we'll circle around and get some pictures with them later. Um... Just because, like I said, we want to just get to the rides. We want to grab some fast yeah. passes, get our day started. Um, but literally walking past them is so special. Just seeing them, getting to wave at them. Meeting all the all different the characters. Kids. Oh, it's so great. And so, so I fun. think that really boosts my experience. Yeah. How about you, so experience-wise? Um, I mean, yeah, so much. So much good about Main Street. But, yeah, honestly, just... Getting into the park in the morning, just starting out my day like I'm ready to go and just walking down Main Street with the castle like looming ahead of me, dizzy music in my ears and like all the sights and sounds of the that. Music, yes. Just honestly walking down Main Street in the morning is is my favorite. I guess that counts as an experience. I don't know, but I love it. Main Street is just so special. I love it. It is, for sure. Um, so. Moving on out. Moving on out. We finally reached the hub. Mm-hmm. Now, you have the big pivotal, choice. <laughs> big choice. You go left. You go right. You go straight. And I feel like we never go straight, although one time we need to do it. I feel like I always work, my mind always works in. Circular. Let's hit something yeah, <laughs> circular, go around. Because if you go straight, then you have to choose another thing, left or right again. So. We like always go either around. left or right. We tend to always start a day going left towards Adventureland. We love unless, Adventureland. Unless what? Unless we decide that it's imperative to get a Space Mountain Fast Pass mm. right out the gate in the morning because you know that line is going to be like two hours oh, yeah. before you know it and you got to have a Fast Pass ready to go. You need to, yeah. So. so one of us will usually go over there, grab all the tickets, get those Fast Passes. Meet back at the hub, and then we enter Adventureland. Yeah, Adventureland is where we start our day. Um, Definitely where we make our first stop. Yeah. Um, So food wise, also I'm. I was just gonna say. I'm gonna power up. I think we forgot something very important here. Okay, ready? ready? One, two, three. Tiki, (laughs) tiki whiskey. There we go. I feel like we have to stir it around. All right, there we go. So for those not watching and just. Listening, we, we just dumped our whiskey into our uh, <laughs> our uh, mint juleps, and how does it taste? Bomb, it's good. Gave it a little something extra. Yeah, a little bit extra kick, but not you too much. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's nice because I feel like it was too sweet before. No, it's okay. Just... I feel bad saying too sweet, but <laughs> for for a nighttime, I feel like a little bit too sweet. And yeah, just it hits. Yeah, it hits it right. It was, yeah. it was just right. It's good. So, anyways, so, favorite food and favorite food. Hit it up. I mean, it's a it's a classic, and it's kind of a given in Adventureland. The Dole Whip. The Dole I mean, Whip. I'm wearing it. It's my favorite. Yeah. I I can't especially in that new Tropical Hideaway. I love oh, Tropical Hideaway, so and I mean, the classic Dole Whip will always be my favorite. Like, just nothing better. But they do have some really good swirls. Yeah, the there. swirls are They're, really good, too. You know, raspberry and pineapple, like yeah. orange and pineapple or something. Like, so good. Really, really good, too. But. You know what's interesting is I feel like sometimes I was hindered from getting the Dole Whip in the past because that line right near Tiki Room, for some reason, Very always intimidating. so long. But even if you take that same length of a line and put it in Tropical Hideaway, it's so much more open and that it you're moves a little more a fine. Yeah, because there's multiple cashiers, I yeah. feel like, now. So... It does help the line go really quickly. Much quicker, so, yeah. So, um, definitely I the Dole love, Whip. Gotta go with the Dole Whip. You can't beat the Dole Whip. How about you? Um, okay, so favorite snack, and I've always loved this, um, you know, for years on end. And I would say a Dole Whip, but since you said Dole Whip, I have I to go with my, 
maybe a tie. Although I think Dole Whip obviously is a little bit better, but I am gonna have to go Chieftain Chicken Skewer from Bengal Barbecue. Um, so good. There's something about that that just like, it's the perfect snack. I love it so much. Um, it's great. And it just puts me in that Adventureland vibe. And it's just the right amount. It's like for a snack, you know, it's not like a full on lunch, I yeah. feel like, but it's just yeah. a good like, hold you over until like whatever meal you're gonna have kind of for sure so good and also the uh the bacon wrapped asparagus is oh really good there too so good so good that place is just wonderful and i'm so yeah. glad that they expanded and like oh got yeah more there's seating. oh my gosh it's so great love that so place perfect. experience what are you uh what are you going for experience i mean the whole vibe of adventureland is just the best. I love Adventureland, but if I had to choose like a specific thing, I love sitting in Tropical Hideaway. I feel mm. like it's so immersive mm. and they just like set it up so well. And I don't know, like it's right there on Jungle on Cruise. Like water, you're watching yeah. people go by in the boats and I don't know. It just like gets you in that in that zone in so zone. much. I, I love just hanging out there with my Dole Whip and like a bow bun. Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, the bow buns. Honorable mention: bow bun, amazing, so, so good. good. Um, so yeah. for experience for me, um, I know we said no rides, and we also excluded queues because I think obviously Indiana Jones queue would be one Tops of those. All, <laughs> but we didn't exclude post queue, and I think. That was one of the things for me is when you get off of Indiana Jones and you're you're exiting, um, even after you get outside the inside um, portion of the, the post queue, um, walking by Jungle Cruise and seeing the skippers, they always like make fun and joke around with those getting off of Indiana Jones. And um, and then you get to see just that whole area just really puts you in that Adventureland like spirit. You hear the Tarzan treehouse really puts you in that mood. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that is one of my favorite experiences. Also honorable mention, not food wise, but just something we always do in Adventureland. The bathrooms in Adventureland are um, amazing. I feel like that's a great meeting spot. Um, also for those spot. waiting for those in the bathroom, you get this cool rock fixture to sit on. And I think uh, that's why we always choose that bathroom. Yeah. It's great. It's, a good it's one. nice. Yeah. Good place to sit down and wait. For your, your crew. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Um, so as we as we round about, we're getting out of Adventureland, we enter New Orleans Square. <laughs> yes. One of my favorite lands ever. I mean, all the lands are my favorite. Yeah. I have to say. But so hard to choose, but there's Orleans. something about New Orleans Square. You have pirates and Haunted Mansion there. So classic Disney. Such nostalgia. So amazing. So food wise, what are you going? Food or drink? What are you going? I would have to say, I mean, there's a lot of good food in New Orleans Square, but being a um, semi-New Orleans native, not really. I have family in, in yeah, New yeah. Orleans, but uh, I love the gumbo in New Orleans Square. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's at the French Market. I so should double check we that. know exactly where it's at. Yeah, I can picture it in my but mind. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the French market. Right on that corner. But yeah, mm. the gumbo, delicious there. Uh, so good. That is so amazing. nice and warm. Just warm. I love soul. that. Yeah, at night, you're just warming up. I'm yeah. going for another warm up type of uh, food. I'm going, as you would guess it, and we will make both. Of, I'm sure we'll make both of these soon. Mm, we have to. The Mickey Beignets. Mm. Mickey beignets all the way. So Cafe good. Cafe du Monde vibes. Oh, it's so good. I love that little, where you get them, it's like this little kind of, just a counter mm -hmm. off the beaten path. You get your beignets. So amazing. Um, and yeah, at nighttime, they just warm you right up. Um, so good. I love them so much. So um, experience. What are you going? Experience for me. Again, I could say everything about yeah. New Orleans Square. I love New Orleans Square, but... I love getting off of Pirates and checking out Pieces of Eight, the store, like, right at the end mm. as you're exiting the ride. Um, it really just kind of feels like you're, like, st 
still a part of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I just love that store and just strolling around and maybe picking out a souvenir. It's a, it's a great, great little spot. Yeah. And then as I make my way out of there, just kind of peeking at uh, Club 33 and just imagining the day that maybe I'll be in there enjoying some beverages yeah i think that whole street once you come out of pirates you take that left there's this i mean everything about it really just is so new orleans so magical they nailed it they nailed it yeah and you 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 curve it and out the street's not that big i feel like there's tiny little shops Mm -hmm. and it just really it really feels like you're there if you've never been to new orleans we've gone once together yeah I've been once before that, but I mean, it is like spot on, like the same yeah. feel, same vibe. It's they they got it right. We always <laughs> say that's like top three U.S. cities because it really feels like, especially you know, if you've been to Disneyland before and and you love New Orleans Square, it's like they took Disney and put it in a city. Because um, you hear that music as you're walking down the streets, you um, have that amazing food, and there's just so many things about it that. Um, that just kind of bring that little bit of magic there. And yeah. so we, we love New Orleans so much. It's so good. Oh, it's How so about great. you experience-wise? Experience, yeah. So I, um, I'm i a musician. I play the drums, a little bit of guitar, a little bit of... Um, everything. I don't know. Yeah, a little bit of everything. <laughs> and so I love hearing the live bands play, whether that's the live band at the restaurant or the live band just... On the streets and yeah, as we're yeah, we were talking and we're like, oh my gosh, there's the pirate band that will play, which puts you in that mood. But then there's also that New Orleans jazz band playing their thing. I think the drummer has like a snare drum and a, a ride cymbal wrapped around his waist. And it's like both of those experiences really just either um make me feel like I'm on Tortuga and I'm a pirate or something, or just make me feel like I'm a I'm sitting in New Orleans. Going in, <laughs> yeah, going downtown. And so I love the music in New Orleans Square, all the live music. Incredible. I must so good. do, for sure. Gotta sit and listen <sighs> to the music here oh, and there. I love it. So amazing. So good. All right. So yeah. we're making our way out of New Orleans. Making and... our way downtown. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, from New Orleans, we head right over into Critter Country. We do, yeah. You have that fork in the road. I feel like you'd either go Critter Country or Frontierland. We always go Critter Country. We usually go Critter Country. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, am I up? Am I food? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so for food, I'm going to have to say the, um, the double cheeseburger at a Hungry Bear restaurant is always quality. Like, it's always yeah. good. I feel like that's the only real restaurant there. But yeah. whenever I'm feeling a burger... I can always trust Hungry Bear. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there. It's ready it's for you. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Burgers. Oh, it's great. It's another good pit stop. They have really nice bathrooms there with the little Dyson <laughs> hair dryer. It, it, not hair dryers. <laughs> That'd be gross if you wore a hair dryer in the in in public those. place. <laughs> hand dryers. Dyson hand dryers. Right? I think they yeah, do. I think so. Those are if good not, bathrooms. then I'm just always imagining Hungry Bear with <laughs> hand dryers. And I think that's really weird. But hopefully they do. But they, they have these this nice... Uh, Nice little pit stop area where yeah. you just do everything. Mm-hmm, yeah, they do. How, how about you food wise? Well, there's not a lot of food to pick from in Critter Country. Obviously, Hungry Bear is like the only restaurant. Um, and you already went with Hungry Bear. So I think I would have to go with just the the candy shop mm. in uh, Pooh by Pooh Corner. Yeah. Candy shop of Poohs. Yeah. Not the, <laughs> the most, Pooh Candy. Uh, appealing name. <laughs> Um, corner, but yeah. But it's just a fun little shop and they have so much candy. Oh yeah. Obviously can't go wrong with candy. And they can't have one of those, candy. you know, glass oh. counters with all the like specialty chocolate candies yeah. and stuff. All so good. Um, that would have to be my pick. When they bust out the glass with the treats right behind the glass, you know it's quality. Yeah. You know they're good, being made good by stuff. those. Chocolatiers, those candy. Uh, yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, so good. Classic. All right. Here we go. Next experience. Experience. Yeah. So I would have to say one of my favorite experiences, excluding rides, is um, the Briar Patch. I believe that's what it's called. The hat shop. Yeah, mainly a hat shop. They have some other things there. Um, but it's just that extension of Splash Mountain. And they themed that store so well. It, there's the 
the um you know the what's it called um the oh, patch the like yeah. yeah the little <laughs> the little thorny bushes coming through the uh through the store and it really that's a great shop that really kind of um keeps you immersed in that land and so i would have to say that and i am very curious what they're going to change that to once mm-hmm. um we have the princess and the frog ride um R. and R. Splash Mountain. R.I.P. Splash Mountain, we are gonna miss you. Um, we we love you so much. We are very excited to see what will come with the Princess and the Frog. We love Princess and the yeah. Frog. We love Tiana. Amazing. Disney we always the, does it right, so I know it's they do. Be, yeah, it's gonna be done well. Can't I'm wait. excited. I'm excited to see Princess Tiana. I'm excited to see Louis Alligator. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm so pumped. It's gonna for be it. good. It's gonna be great. Yeah, but um. So that's my experience. What's your experience? My favorite experience, I think, would have to just be meeting the characters, honestly. Um, they're always kind of in that little hub outside of Pooh Corner and Splash yeah. Mountain. And they're just so fun and so cute. Um, they are. I don't know. I think the last time that we were there, they totally just brightened my day. Like, I waited in line to meet, you know, the classic three, Tigger, Eeyore, and Pooh. And... They were just so sweet, and I got the best hug in the world from Tigger, and um, I feel like I'm just going to remember it forever. It was so, so fun, and it just brightened my day. Yeah, one of the best things about that area is that each character is so different, and they play their part so well. Tigger is so happy, so excited to meet you. Oh, yeah. Um, And then Pooh is so loving and so kind, and it just gives the best hugs, right? And then you got Eeyore, he's a little bit shy, and they really do a really good job in that area. And I love meeting the Pooh characters. Yeah, they're the that's best. so amazing. They're, they're super sweet. Yeah. So that's me. So as we after we meet the Pooh characters, we wrap around. Now. Now, yeah, the crazy thing is we, <laughs> we don't have to turn around sports. at this point. No more you turn and then get to Frontierland. We have a full loop, ladies and gentlemen. This yes. is first time ever yeah, we have a edge. full loop. So yeah, we're we're heading down Critter Country. Do do do. We finally <laughs> make it to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Oh my gosh! That place. What a great land. Uh, food or drink? Food and or drink. What are you? Uh, what are you going okay. for? So, I was pregnant the last time that we were at Disneyland. Um, I could not fully enjoy Oga's Cantina or the other alcoholic beverages within Galaxy's Edge. But I did have this really good juice from Ronto Roasters. Yes. Um, it was called the Mailaroon juice. It's kind of a reddish color. Yeah. yeah. Punch something. Mailaroon something. Like something. Uh, really good. Super refreshing. Non-alcoholic. But... I loved it. It was super tasty. Yeah. So I think that would have to be my favorite. Yeah, I tried that too, and I was just so impressed. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a good mocktail. This is amazing. Um, Yeah, how about you? For food, I'm also going Ronto Roasters. So good. I love seeing that little pod racing uh, engine, cooking up the food. Amazing. And so I'm going to have to go with the Ronto Wrap. The Ronto Wrap is so good. We actually, for the finale of The Mandalorian, I was like, with some Star Wars food. I do this all the time. Like, yeah. We're like watching something and we're always like, around okay. We're going to be watching that night. I'm not the best all cook, the but for some reason it's so fun doing it. So it's like, <laughs> Mandalorian finale, what are we doing? Like, how do we like, make a Ronto wrap? Ronto wrap. wrap. <laughs> like, Found that. And I think that was maybe the start of wanting to do the show because I thought it was <laughs> so crazy that I brought Disney food into our into our living room and I was like, Let's do it. How do we so, just keep doing Ronto this? Rap, yeah. The Ronto Rap is incredible. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Good so, stuff. favorite experience? Well, again, I was pregnant, so I couldn't enjoy the full benefits of Oga's, but we still went in there with our group of uh, friends, and the vibe in there is the just vibe. like... Oh, my gosh. Spot on Star Wars. Like, you really feel like you're in the cantina. Yeah. It's so fun. Like... The music going and just like the bartenders. The bar- yeah, I was just gonna say the bartenders have that like spunky little "Hey, what do you want?" kind of yeah. you know thing. Like oh. they're, it's so immersive and it was such a fun experience. I loved just hanging out in there. I mean, we only had our limited like 
half hour, hour, hour or something, hour, yeah. but it was just so fun. I loved Ogas. Yeah, Ogas was great, and I would say Ogas as well. Since you did that, I'm thinking on my toes. Um, so we did not get to build the lightsaber. I'm sure that would be one of ours if we did get a chance. Uh, we just didn't have that uh, 200 or whatever bucks <laughs> extra to spare. So uh, especially planning for a baby, we're like, maybe we shouldn't buy a $200 lightsaber. So um, we didn't get that experience, hopefully soon. But um, what I loved and just... You know, something that made me feel so immersed in the land. Um, I loved Doc Ondar's, um, Doc Ondar's Antiquities or something like that. Um, I did love that so much. One of my favorite things is um, any type of animatronic. And I feel like you always see animatronics in rides, but you don't get to see them out in the wild. You don't get to see them, you know, outside of the rides. And so um, when you walk into that shop and you see this, I don't know, I forgot what creature it is, but... Um, He's behind the cash register bartering or whatever and seeing an ant, uh, um, animatronic behind there. That was so cool to see um, in person up uh, so close. And then I would also say the market. There's that marketplace where oh, there's yeah. a little toy shop, a little, um, you know, uh, souvenir. There's a so whole much. bunch of stuff. And um, just walking through that, it feels like you're in a Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. just uh you know going through and it almost seems like the shop i mean disney would never allow this but it almost seems like the shopkeepers are ready to barter with you you know barter <laughs> yeah. prices it just it really puts you into that um the outer rim star wars kind of vibe so i'd have to say uh there's two shopping experiences yeah, yeah. super immersive all yeah. all of galaxy's edge is uh, super so immersive awesome. it's it's incredible they especially they i know we're not talking about rise but rise of the resistance so awesome. Good. We got to experience it a lot because it broke down a couple times for us. Um, so we got to experience that pre, uh, pre-show pre area a, a lot. Times. And the, the pre-show and the ride and everything. So amazing. So yeah. um, once it opens, hit it up. So if you fun. want, if you need to know tips on how to get um, Rise of the Resistance um, boarding passes, we had a good little game plan. So hit us up. We'll let you guys know how we did that. Um, anyway, so we're walking, we're walking out, we're walking out of, uh, Galaxy's Edge and we find ourselves in Frontierland. Yes. So, a uh, Frontierland has one of the best Disneyland rides and so we're talking food. What are you, uh, what are you going for food? Food wise for me, I think I would have to say the Mickey pretzel at one of the carts, um, in Frontierland is my favorite. Um, yeah, you always get them Somehow there. I always end up getting my Mickey pretzel in Frontierland, like, as we're about to watch a show yeah. at night. It's yeah. like, it's always how it goes down for me. So there's a cart kind of right outside the Thunder Mountain queue area. That's where I always get my pretzel. And I guess I would just have to say that's my favorite food in that land. Yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, food for me, I love getting um i love getting the uh, chicken yeah the chicken nuggets at golden horseshoe um for some reason they're always so good they have that sprite there for some reason i always get within <laughs> for some reason the sprite hit different in in Frontierland. oh i love it so so much yeah that, um, that midday like we're tired we need to go like take a break and like watch a show and yeah. have a little snack and drink Oh, and where we go. It's a great place to take a break because they have charging station or not charging. They have outlets. Yeah. It's pretty much a charging station, but they have <laughs> a, a place where you could recharge yourself in that nice cool room and then also recharge your phone. So yeah, it's great. Um, Love that place. Experiences. I'm going to go because I know you have a good one. I heard I overheard you had a really good one for Frontierland. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go mine first so we could end with you. Um, experiences at Frontierland. Um, one of my favorite things now, um, now that they built out Star Wars Land and everything surrounding it, is that new, um, as you're making your way out of Frontierland into Galaxy's Edge, they have these red rock sculptures, um, not sculptures, but red rocks, um, as you're walking around Frontierland, and it really just puts you into that, uh, Frontierland mood. And I love what they did to that place now that they were um, kind of boosting up uh, Galaxy's Edge. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I love architecture. Transitions. I love the rock. Yeah, it transitions from frontier to maybe I'm in a galaxy far, far away. Really, really well. <laughs> so I'm going to have to see the architecture there by those red rocks. So yeah. experience, you go. This is a good one. All right. I'd have to say in Golden Horseshoe, where Chris's favorite snack was, I love sitting in Walt's box. To yes. watch the show. If you don't know where that is, he would always sit uh, in the right-hand side box just adjacent to the stage yeah. when he was there to watch shows. And I learned that back when I went uh, on my trip with my friend at 14 years old. And now every time I go, I have to try and get that spot. And most of the time it's already taken because I guess a lot of yeah. other people know about that as well. But it's so fun to just sit there and imagine Walt Disney sitting in that spot watching Ugh. the show. Like, it just, it's like surreal. Yeah, he always used to um, watch the show from there. And it is so fun. Like, I love going there. You also have view. to be prepared. You yeah. have to be prepared because um, sometimes that show, the the actors on stage will pick on you because you're right next to them, literally face to face. So, yeah, it's happened um, once or twice to me. Yeah. A little intimidating, but I try to just kind of like slink Slunk back, just, yeah, yeah. Like, so they don't notice me. But they will notice you. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're sitting in Walt's box. So yeah, it's a fun time though. It's, it's it is. So special. It is so fun. Um, so as we are, we're walking out of Frontierland. So what we usually do after Frontierland. We head back to the hub, um, but on our way to Fantasyland, we're actually doing bonus round, bonus. Fantasy Fair, um, yeah. which is right there. And I think that they um, incorporated that little tiny section so well. It feels like it's been there forever. Definitely it's only been there for um, a couple of years. And yeah, love Fantasy Fair. So what would you say is your favorite food item? Favorite food. Or drink. There's not a lot of options. Again, it's a very small area, but Maurice's Treats treats. is so good. They have this chocolate twist Mm. that's definitely got to be my favorite. It is so tasty. Um, I love that thing. There's also like a savory twist. I don't think we've ever gotten that one before. I don't think so. Yeah, we always... uh, It's like garlic or something. Chocolate twist. Probably really good too, but we've always gotten the chocolate one and... I love that thing. It's so good. Yeah. Such a good If snack. you guys ever like churros reign supreme, but that chocolate twist close is second. really, really good. So yeah, one person of your party get the churro. No, maybe you know what? You each get a churro. You each get a chocolate twist. Just experience it yeah. all. Eat it's Disneyland. You, you just get a, yeah, you get to eat as much as All you bets know. are off. <laughs> all bets are off. Yeah. How about um, you? So favorite food or drink? I love the boys and apple freeze from Marisa's Treats. Mm. Um, and so refreshing. It's so good. It's the perfect amount of slush. They also used to have this uh, passion fruit, I believe, um, float of whip some kind. or yeah. something on top. And I think that they stopped doing it for a while. They just did regular whipped cream for a while. And I don't know if it's back or not. Um, I hope yeah, so. well, it's not back because the party's closed. But I don't know if like <laughs> most recent uh, times if it's back or not. But that thing, regardless, like whether you get the passion fruit whip or whatever or not, it's incredible. It's, it's so, so good. So, good. so oh, refreshing. Yeah. So great. So uh, experience at... Favorite Fantasy experience? Fair. I mean, I love to meet me some princesses. Yeah. That's the only place you can do it now. And they're all just so sweet and so fun to meet. And I really only do it if like the line isn't super long, but... When it's not really long, I love to jump in there and get to meet whoever happens to be out in that uh, time frame. Yeah, it is always so fun. fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little home base for the princesses now. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's a perfect spot. It, um, it is, yeah. How about you? What's your favorite experience? So I'm going to veer off and say something that no one else will probably get to experience. But um, one one experience that has always stuck out to me ever since 2015 was actually um, the day we got engaged. Yeah, so uh, Emily and my family were waiting out by the castle, and I was actually, I think I said, I don't have to go to the bathroom or something. And so I I actually rushed off to Fantasy Fair, met with um, one of my uh, friends, 
uh, Blake Rozier, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he he actually helped me propose to Emily. We did this whole. We actually have it on YouTube, so you can find it. Hit us up if you want to actually watch I think it. You but can link it even. I could, yeah, I could probably link it. So, um, but yeah, that was my waiting area um, before I came out and proposed to Emily. So um, that experience will always stick with me. And yeah, that reigns supreme in my uh, fantasy fair. Um, so memories. special. Yeah, it, it really was. I had to so, that one in there. Yeah. So moving out of fantasy fair is when we head into fantasy land. Yes. Oh so, my gosh. Such a good thing. Personally, we love to go back out of Fantasy Fair and walk in through the gate of the castle. Actual gate, yeah. Because yeah. it's just the most magical way to enter Fantasyland. So, we walk into Fantasyland and what's your favorite food? Favorite food. So, I'm going to have to say Red Rose Tavern. Mm. Red Rose Tavern, the flatbread there is really incredible. I love it. Super good. Super delicious. How about you? Well, one of my last times visiting there, I found out that they have the gray stuff. Yes. If you know Beauty and the Beast, then you know about the gray stuff. So um, I got to try that, and it's on this little like shortbread cookie, and it's just kind of this gray whip that's delicious. Um, yeah. Had to get that, and it's good. It's good it's stuff. Delicious. Yeah, you guys have to yeah. try it. I love it. That would that would probably be my pick. But Red Rose yeah. Tavern in general is it is they really just have nice. Really good stuff. Yeah, I know. I love the Village House too. Um, mm -hmm. But Red Rose Tavern, especially after that live action remake, yeah, it just fits perfectly there. Yeah, it's perfect. Love it. I love it too. Yeah. So uh, favorite experience. Yeah, experience, and I think this is technically. Yeah, this is technically in Fantasyland. The um, Mickey and the Magical Map. At the theater right there. Um, one of our favorite shows always brings me to tears. That princess medley. Are you oh kidding? Oh my gosh. I'm bawling my eyes out. And I'm also bawling my eyes out at the end. Maggie comes out and they're singing uh, Princess and the Frog song. Oh it's my gosh. It's so good. It's that so show great. Is the best. And now it's no more. It's no more... But I think that they could bring it back. They they said that the Lion King show at Walt Disney World was no more. They brought it back. I think it's going to be a, a pause. we're pausing, we're pausing, and then once we get those funds, we're going to bring the actors back. So hopefully it's back because I love that show I so much. I really hope they bring it yeah. back because that is my favorite spot to just take a break in the mid-afternoon, have a snack, so good. cool down a little bit, and just watch an amazing show. It's yeah. so good. So awesome. So, uh, how about you experience-wise? My favorite experience in Fantasyland, not a ride, doesn't count as a ride, but I love walking through the castle. The castle walkthrough is so, so special. It is, it is. There's yeah. nothing like being inside Sleeping Beauty's castle and like yeah, getting to watch seriously. Sleeping Beauty play out like right in front of your eyes. Yeah, um, it is have so to do fun. that every time we go. It's, it's just like a staple for some yeah. reason for me oh it's so awesome i love it yeah i love that too so so as we get out of fantasy land um we make our way into toontown toontown and so we're just gonna kind of um forget about our favorite food or drink there because we not a lot of options i, I don't think we've ever eaten there before i think there's one cart <laughs> one cart with like a like monster and then some snacks yeah. So we're going to just say we'll no. We'll quickly go through Toontown because we yeah. truly don't spend a lot of time there. Yeah. But still have some kind of fun memories. Yeah. So, so. what's your favorite experience there? My favorite experience is definitely walking through Mickey's house. Yes. It's so fun. Uh, I mean, I love seeing all the other characters' houses too, but Mickey's just like you have to do it. Um, last time, one of the last times we were there, I got to bring my little nephew who was like four at the time through there. And mm -hmm. I just remember his look of awe, like, this is Mickey's house. Like this it was where so, gardens? this is where he sits. Yeah, it yeah. was so, so cute watching him like admire it all. So that was really special for me. And I just love going through Mickey's house and then ending it off by meeting him at the end. Uh -huh. So fun and like intimate. It's just like your group and him in a room. And the line is always crazy long, but it's 
fun at least because there's like Mickey cartoons going and the, the room where you wait. So you like have something to focus on to pass the time. And it's just so fun. I love meeting Mickey at the end. Yeah, he's incredible. And he's always in those different costumes. And you're like, which one's he going to be in? <laughs> which and Mickey do we so, get today? <laughs> oh, it's so fun. So for my favorite experience, um, I'm going to do another honorable mention because literally as I was growing up, one of my favorite things to do at Disneyland was jump on Goofy's furniture in his house. That was like, <laughs> I always remember doing that. And then I remember the day I went and then they said I was too tall to jump on his furniture. <sighs> Sad and I was day. so sad that I couldn't do that anymore. So, um, honorable mention there, I always dream that I'm able to do it again. They'll do like an adults only jump on Goofy's Furniture Day, but mm -hmm. it hasn't happened yet. So I'm very sad. Um, and then, so my favorite experience besides that kind of pales in comparison. <laughs> um, but I always love right around that fountain there, there's these potholes that, um, if you step on them, they make sounds. And I always love just like seeing those people sitting, taking a break at the water fountain and then just stepping on a ton of potholes and mm -hmm. just like seeing their faces as if they do that. anybody notices. Yeah. And I feel like most of the times they don't care. But for some reason for me, I'm like, oh, got them. Got them. They're, <laughs> they're freaked out because I stepped on this pothole. And in reality, they're just probably like, probably oh, this, <laughs> this, old, this old adult man is just stepping on potholes and, and thinking it's hysterical. So... But in my mind, I think it's hysterical. So I love doing it that. It is fun. So um, as we walk out, Attitude we do town? only have one land left. Yeah. We do. Wow. Tomorrowland. We're wrapping around out near land. Alice in Wonderland. And we're going towards Matterhorn. And then we find our way into Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to say as your favorite food? And speaking about food... You still have some pretzel there. I'm going to take the tiniest little bite. Go for it's it. It's so good. You made these things really well. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So as you talk about your food, I'm going to eat your food that you <laughs> Okay. Um, again, I don't think there's a lot that I've eaten in Tomorrowland. Somehow that's not somewhere I typically like stop to eat until this last trip that we went on, which was about a year ago, right before things closed down for the last year. Um, we were there in the morning and we were all really hungry and I heard that they have really good breakfast burritos at, oh my gosh, why did I just blank on what it's uh, called? Galactic Grill. Galactic Grill, the like main restaurant in Tomorrowland. Yeah. Shout um, out to our friend Ryan, I think. Here. Yeah. Um, our friend Ryan, uh, told us, knowledge. Ryan and his wife Gladys were like, Hey, they have great breakfast burritos over there. So I was like, those great. are kind of my favorite oh. like thing to eat for breakfast. So I hit that up and wow, yeah. I was amazed. Amazing. Was so good. Really a great way to start your day. Filling um, and just like such good stuff in yeah. those burritos. So that would have to be my favorite. Yeah. And for my food, um, I always tend to get churros in Tomorrowland. I guess I'm always ready for that cinnamon cinnamony goodness when I'm in Tomorrowland. But mm -hmm. um I'm going to switch it up. Obviously, churros are the best, but I'm going to switch it up because I'm going to say the cold brew at Galactic Grill as well. So for those people who might have had enough of Starbucks or, I don't know, maybe just want to get something Disney and not Starbucks, um, heading over to Galactic Grill, getting that breakfast burrito, getting a nice cold brew from there. Um, the cold brew is really good. The breakfast really burrito good. is really good. So that's just another alternative nice to pairing. start your day. Um, yeah. It's amazing. I love it so much. So, so good. Now it's going to be a staple on our trips moving forward. So yeah, now that we know. That's going to be great. Yeah. Never going back. All right. So what is your favorite experience in Tomorrowland? In Tomorrowland, I would have to say, aside from Space Mountain, because obviously that's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, I love Captain EO. Captain EO is great. I love it's it. A, it's a fun little show. And... I think a lot of people either love it or they hate it, but I just think it's a fun, fun little break in your day. Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of cheesy, like it's but super fun. Kind of cheesy, but also pretty well done for being made, I think, in the 80s, maybe late 80s, early 90s. But yeah, I love one of my favorite things about it is that like 
even if you're drug like dragged into there, you know, from some friends who love it, like no matter what, you're dancing because literally the seats are made like forcing you're you to forced dance. To yeah, dance. Your they're bouncing gonna up be and moving. down to Michael <laughs> Jackson, and you're like, even if you're sitting there like all mad, you're 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 going for it. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's a great experience. Yeah, love it. It is. It's fun. How about you? Yeah. I would say. Favorite experience is trying to catch the Matterhorn in a new view that most people don't really see. Um, so I think you get really cool video or sorry, really cool views from uh Nemo Submarine Voyage. And then also on top of the monorail, there's something about catching a little bit of the water from the submarine voyage and the Matterhorn in the back that really just um it's just such a cool experience because not everyone gets to see it unless they're like in that queue, in that line. And it's just so beautiful. So I love, I love getting to see that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good view for the Matterhorn. Yeah. So that's the last and land. That is the last land. Um, so before we closed, we wanted to just do a quick, brief nighttime experience favorites. Um, this could be rides this could be whatever the case may be but just some of our favorite things to do at nights in the park so um do you have anything that comes to mind i mean i just love nighttime in disneyland to begin with i think it's extra magical because all the lights are on it's just the best but uh something i love and i think i already mentioned it is just enjoying my gibson girl ice cream on main street oh yeah uh sitting out like on the sidewalk or wherever it might be um maybe during a show or something it's just extra magical enjoying my ice cream out there yeah main street in general at night it's just so beautiful a great way to end your your disney day either the most magical experience or the most magical and sad experience ever because if it's your last day you know, once you walk out those gates, you aren't able to rush back in there and just try to get a little more Disney. Um, But a little magic for uh, a while. Yeah, that is the saddest thing, but it is the best way to end your Disney trip. It Um, is. Nighttime at Main Street. So beautiful. Give give me some more nighttime musts. Yeah, so um, besides the shows, I mean, the shows, the fireworks show, Fantasmic. Love Fantasmic. Everything. So beautiful. So amazing. Um, but something a little more unique than that would probably be riding a couple of rides during the show. So, um, and I feel like w- rides during the shows are already a little bit shorter, which is great. The lines for them, but Thunder Mountain during the fireworks show, if you're able to time it right and get on during the fireworks, especially during that finale, incredible. Like one of my favorite experiences so beautiful. And then also I love I love Splash Mountain during uh Fantasmic. Fantasmic, I feel is a little bit longer. So you have a little bit more time to work with if you're on um Splash and how long mm-hmm. the ride that is. So going on Splash Mountain, I think one time we went on Splash Mountain and we got to see the Maleficent the dragon. dragon and we were like, this right is the we coolest thing. We were coming around the corner on ever. the outside right yeah. before one of the drops. It was, it, it was, was so awesome. Cool. And so trying to see those shows from like a different height or different perspective is always super fun. So I would have to say that's for my, uh, that's it's for like my two experience. experiences in one. It's like yeah. a show and a ride at the same time. And it, it just puts a whole new perspective on that show. Oh, yeah. another, another, uh, ride. I love pirates at night. Mm-hmm. Um, pirates is already great in the day. Um, because it makes it feel like you're at nighttime and like Tortuga or something like that. But when you come out, it's daytime and then it kind of like strips away a little bit of that, um, that immersiveness. Yeah. But for some reason, when you ride it at night and it's dark and then you get out and it's still dark, it like keeps you in that pirate yeah. moon. It's so great. It really feels like you're there. Oh, it's, it's so great. So, um, anyways, I think that is, that concludes our first ever episode on the happiest hour on earth podcast so thank you all for joining thanks for listening yeah um so we have some more food to try next week we're gonna be we have to figure out what we're gonna make next week another food and another drink 
If you guys have any ideas, please follow us on Instagram. List your ideas wherever. You could message us or um, just comment on one of our pictures. Uh, we have some lined up, but yeah, if you have any ideas, we'll we definitely make those. Ideas. Yeah, so uh, thank you for sticking around yeah. for this hour. This was a little bit longer than we were expecting. So thank you for sticking through, and we will catch you next week. Yeah, see you next time. We got lots more coming your way. Yeah, see you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.